Well, good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Today is Sunday, March the 21st, 2021. This is Sister Linda Kirkland coming on the behalf of the Greater Beulah Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Anthony L. Willis Sr. is our pastor. Again, I say welcome and thank you so much for coming in to YouTube or either coming into our website and just clicking on Sunday School for this week. We have another awesome lesson. I am so excited to get into this. This lesson today's lesson title is seeking wisdom for the future and the scripture the background scripture is 2nd Kings the 22nd chapter the 14th through the 20th verse man seeking wisdom for the future I mean as Christian I mean anybody all of us should be always be seeking wisdom for the future Asking God, what do you have for me? What is your plan for my life? Amen. So before we get started, let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's once more and again, Lord, we come this morning to say thank you, Lord. Lord, I am so grateful for your many blessings that you store upon me. Father, I pray that as we come, Lord God, that you will bestow upon me the words that is needed to say so that whoever is listening right now, Lord God, that they would listen with an open mind, heart, and spirit so that they can either change their lives themselves or either help change somebody else life. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray that I would decrease and the spirit that lies within me would increase, Lord God, so that the words of my mouth would be your words. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel that right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, amen. So, seeking wisdom for the future. So, think about it. You know, for people that know me, I always love to start off with a question. So here it goes. What is wisdom? Hmm. Wisdom. Now, of course, I Google it and wisdom and Google said that wisdom is the quality of having experience, quality of knowledge or either quality of good judgment. You got that? So, wisdom, the quality of having good experience, great knowledge, a good judgment. Wisdom. Now, we all know that in the Bible, uh, I think that was Solomon. Solomon, he prayed and asked God for wisdom. The Lord said, I would grant you anything. And his thing was, Lord, I just want wisdom. So, think about wisdom now. You know, and, and I and I believe that um, all these words, um, we all can look at it where we are in our lives. So when I think about wisdom for where I am today, especially spiritually, I think of wisdom and I think of the knowledge and the experience that God has given me based on how I should live my life. Asking the Lord to bless me. So that as I move on towards the future, that I would do the right things, you can say. Or I would make sure that I follow the will of God, which are what? The commandments. And his greatest commandment is what? To love one another. And that's one thing I always say is that, you know, people say, oh, I don't know. Yes, you do. We all know the right things that we should do. And there's something within us that when we know that we do something wrong, it's something that's down up in your belly, down up in your heart that make you say, oh, that wasn't right. And, and that's the spirit because we know when we are not doing the right thing. Seriously, think about it. Everything that you have done wrong, you know you was doing it wrong. You know that. So seeking wisdom for the future Seeking guidance, seeking doing the right things, seeking to do the right thing for my future. Amen. So let's get into the lesson. Um, as I said, great lesson. Um, seeking wisdom. Um, so this is how the story goes for today. So we meet Josiah. He was the young king of Israel. He was eight years old when he took over the throne. Yes, I said eight. He was eight years old. 
And he took over the throne because his father was assassinated. Okay. So you can imagine how he, how he felt. Uh, can you even imagine being eight years old and you leading a country? It seems kind of crazy, right? But I'm sure he had a lot of help for other people within the government during that time. And he reigned over Judea for 31 years. And we know that during this time, Josiah had committed to following the Lord. His desires included ordering the temple to be repaired and reformed and the Israelites to return to God. And because what had happened is that they had strayed away towards worshiping out of God, not following the word of God. And so God and his word was neglected by the Israelites during that time. And that was like doing um, Josiah's father and his grandfather rings. And so if you were to read a little bit earlier in the chapter, um, a high priest had found a scroll with God's words on it. And he thought to be... Um, it, it, it's said to be a part of Deuteronomy, okay? And the text condemned the actions that the current Israelites people was caught up in, especially when they was worshiping out of God. And the text says that God will punish his people for those matters. And Josiah was very upset by this discovery and hearing the words written that he tore his clothes and commanded several of the priests to find someone with knowledge of the text because he really wanted to understand. Can you imagine he was the king and he probably said, now, wait a minute. Now, this was God's words. So is he really going to bring destruction to the people? He wanted to know, go get me somebody that can truly explain this to me. So the priests went and who do they found? They found Harda, who was a prophet. Now, we don't know much about her or her qualifications, but apparently she was respected for her ability to reveal God and the plans that God has for his people. So Josiah was willing to respect a messenger of God without regard, regards to her gender or her social or economic standards. Wasn't that a blessing? He was simply convicted by his own sins and the sins that he saw that was going around on around him and he wanted to explain what God had in store for his people so regardless if the news that he was going to get was going to be good or bad Josiah was at a point that he wanted to hear it and that he was going to set every, everybody straight before the Lord and Judah, if you think about it, they deserve to be punished for the sins. And Josiah wasn't willing to just bear it on the rug or forget about the things that they were doing. So um, Hada, she, um, she came to Josiah and she said, you know, this is not going to be good news. And she passed along the message from God for the priest to share with Josiah. And it was a message of punishment and destruction. And it was really a harsh message. But God had tolerated Israel's sinful ways for so long. And Hoda related that everything that the priest read in the scroll that was from Deuteronomy would come to pass just as it was written. And think about that. Now, even today, as we read the Bible, God's words is true yesterday, today, and forever. Just because the scroll back then had, was written many years earlier, it didn't mean that it was null or void, void and God would not answer or come to path of what was written. There are still things in the Bible today that is written that has not even happened. Think about it. I thought about one thing um, that, and that is... Um, you know, the Lord said he's coming back again and he's going to crack the sky. So for all of us that believe that, that hasn't happened, even though it was written so many years ago. But guess what? God's word, I mean, God's word does not return void. And I believe that it will happen. So during this time, God chose to postpone punishment until the appropriate time. And this is not just like what we call a free pass or a stamp or approval or anything. But God would not let evil be done even by his own people to go unpunished without consequences. And even though um, what was going to happen was like really harsh and, 
And Josiah felt like, oh, goodness, he didn't want to see all of that happen to the people. God told Hadar that Josiah would be treated with grace because of his desire to seek the Lord and repent from his own sinful ways. And Josiah wasn't accepting the people behavior in the things that they was doing. That's why he told them to go and rebuild the temple. He wanted to start first by rebuilding the temple. And so God promised that the discretion and judgment would not happen until Josiah had died so that he wouldn't have to witness any of that. Isn't that a blessing? God had judged Josiah to be tenderhearted and great spirit and was rewarding him for being actively moving in the spirit because he could have did anything, but you know, he followed the spirit of the Lord. He saw what was going on in Judea and he said, no, this is not going to happen. We're going to start by rebuilding the city and these people are going to start serving God again. So here we see that God's ability to delay judgment out of his mercy for Josiah and that Josiah would not see the destruction of the people. What a blessing that was. And so when we think about um, things that happens in our lives and you think about if it wasn't for this or if it wasn't for that, that how would you respond to the same things that was going on back then? You know, Josiah, he was brokenhearted by the sins of his people. He was the king, so he was hurt. And he did everything in his power to keep his people from sinning. But guess what? They still continue to do just that. But because of Josiah's faithfulness and his trust and belief in God, he just did not want to see them because he still loved his people. So he didn't want to see them destroyed. So God allowed, because of his grace and his mercy, he allowed um, Josiah to have passed away before the destruction of, the, of Judea actually happened. And that was just one of the blessings of the Lord to Josiah, just because of his faithfulness. And I guess that's one of the things you can say for this lesson, seeking wisdom for the future. He seek, he seek God for the future, for the future of Judea that was. So this is like one of those lessons that make you say, hmm, you know, am I actually seeking wisdom? Am I going to God for everything that I do in my lives? So let's recap real quick. So what did we learn today? That Josiah, he was the youngest king of Judea. He was on eight years old when he took the throne. And during his reign, he sought to bring Judea back to God by repairing the temple and bring about the scriptures that had been elected. He sought the Lord's wisdom in his reign and was, was known for his love for God. And then what happened? When he learned that God's people were going to be punished because of their out of worshiping, because of their sin, he became very upset. But the Lord remembered Josiah's passion for putting up with the people of Judea. And so Josiah was spared seeing the people that God said he would destroy. So God delayed the punishment in, out of mercy and grace for Josiah. And that is the what you can say, one of the things that God did to bless Josiah for what? Because of his, his, his faithfulness that he had to the Lord. And I just think that that is one thing that we all should always remember. That God is so faithful to us. Sometimes we don't deserve it. I know I don't. I say that so often when things happen and when God does things for me. I say, Lord, I'm not worthy. But I know that God says because of your faithfulness. You know, God rewards us. A lot of people don't believe that, but I believe that. I believe that God rewards me for my faithfulness. So this week, I want you to think about how you can really stay focused on the Lord and really seek God for wisdom when you're trying to plan for things. When you're trying to plan for a new car, you're trying to plan for a new house, or you're trying to to plan to, to get married or whatever the case may be, always seek the Lord first. Amen? 
Well, once again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope something was said that made you either one, want to go and pick up the Bible yourself and read Second King, or two, something was brought back to your remembrance that would make you want to really do more for the Lord, or three, something was said that would make you want to go and help someone else learn more about the Word of God. So thank you again for joining me, and may God bless you.